You're, You're with, with the Breaker, Breaker Leggers. Leggers. And we're in London's West End at the New London Theatre. To see the musical School of Rock. So stay tuned to find out how many legs. Whether it's Breaker Leg or Leg It. <laughs> Keep your finger on the theatrical bolts. For all the latest news, reviews and interviews. Just hit the subscribe button now. Make sure right you there. comment on the, uh, this show if you've seen this show. If you agree with us, if you disagree with us, join our LEGO community and we'll keep you involved in everything to do with theatre that we are seeing. We love to hear from you. So, uh, this has been open for quite a while, but it's not really been on our radar until quite recently, to be honest. Um, but we are here at the New London, a theatre which I consider to be quite a cave. I don't, it's just an interesting space actually. I was going to mention the space. It's almost like arena-esque. It's a bit like the Olivier Theatre over in the National Theatre in terms of its layout. It's very open. Cavernous is that kind of where yeah, you get it cavernous. from. So uh, it's an interesting space. It is indeed. And this musical opened in 2016. So, I mean, 18 months ago, or We're pretty behind. much, we are a little bit behind. <laughs> so if you are. have seen it, comment below. Yeah. Let us know what you think, if We're you agree or disagree. Finally here. Now, this musical is based on the 2003 movie of the same name, starring... Jack Black. Yeah, the great Jack Black. Um, which was a huge smash hit and apparently has inspired Lloyd Webber to write a musical version of it. Now, I don't consider Lloyd Webber to be a rock and roll, do you? Well, back in the day he was quite rocky. If you think of Jesus Christ Superstar, that's kind of like a rock musical. So, I don't know, I think he's got it in him. Well, clearly he believes he has because he staged this. <laughs> now, the lyrics are by Glenn Slater, who also did the lyrics for Sister at the Musical and Love Never Dies and also the Disney film with Alan Menken, Tangled. Tangled. Yes, he did. Yeah. Uh, he collabs with Alan Menken quite a bit, actually. The book for the show is by Julian Fellows, who created... Downton Abbey. Yes, another Downton Abbey. We saw a play um, last night. You can see our review for that just up there. Fanny and Alexander that had Penelope Wilton in from Downton Abbey. So I feel like we're having a bit of a Downton Abbey spree kind of tedious links. Yes, and he also did the book for the Mary Poppins musical and the most recent Half a Sixpence, which we also reviewed. Now, the story is about Dewey Thin, who's a wannabe rock star who um, wants to earn a bit of extra cash, so poses as a supply teacher and turns the musical students of quite a upper-class preppy school into young rock stars. The piece is two and a half hours long with an interval, so stick around for our 30 second interval, interview, interval, interval breakdown. That's the one. <laughs> and stick around to the end so you can find out how many legs. We'll see you then. We've come to the interval of School of Rock, which means it is time for the Breaker Leggers 30 second interval breakdown. Go! What do you think so far? I, I'm not buying it. There's a real kind of disingenuity to it and especially the performance for me of the lead actor there's no spontaneity I'm not buying the story I'm 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 half assed how about you whereas I'm having a completely different experience I am loving it I think the lead actor is fantastic um, is it Dewey Dowie Dougie Dewey. Dewey he's driving the piece talented kids you cannot go wrong and the piece is thumping and pumping bring on the second So we have come to the end of School of Rock. and Now after our shaky interval, I'm very keen to know what you made of it come the end. I've got to say, it won me over. Really? You're not just saying no, that? No, I felt... <laughs> You're not being sarcastic. I felt a real sense of resolution by the end. I felt that a lot of the issues that I had in terms of characterization in the first act just didn't seem to be there in after the interval i almost felt like someone had slipped the lead actor my note and as a result it felt like a different performance to me and a much more enjoyable performance much of my sort of upset in that one came predominantly because i didn't be believe that stephen leesk was pulling it off and i was proved wrong in the second act and you know what i'm happy to eat my words Okay, well great. I'm glad it worked out for you. Personally, I really enjoyed it. I think it's a, a really good story. It's, it's an age-old story in a way, isn't it? It's kind of nothing new in terms of story, in terms of um, 
exploit finding skills and talent and exploiting them and it all becoming good in the end I'm yeah. trying to think it's kind of that Matilda kind of thing in a way I mean there's no new ideas that, but there I mean there's only what is it they say there's only four stories in the whole world or something so I guess it's, yeah it's kind of resonates with like a Billy Elliot in a way in terms yes. of a talent that isn't discovered and then is discovered and it isn't appreciated by in this case the parents of the children and then you know it, do you know what it upsets me a little bit I'd go so far to say as it pisses me off sometimes that um, do you know parents seem to become passionate about what their kids are passionate about only when they realize the kids are good at it and not before that point this you know, is a soapbox issue but it right does, here but it does happen doesn't it it's like when did you realize that you know when, when did you become so supportive oh when i realized my child was good at the thing that they were passionate about and before then it seems a bit like mm, I don't know that. and this piece explores that really well in this in the other pieces of matilda i guess it's books and edge knowledge and get special powers billy elliott is ballet with this it is music and boy are some of these kids amazing the yes. lead guy on the guitar yes. is just absolutely amazing i'm not entirely sure who we had because being the cast of children i'm sure there's probably three or four of them yeah but this guy it's difficult this to guy's pick fingers, them out. i mean there's a massive list of children <laughs> a full um, double spread there's know, 12 there's of only, them on each production there is only 12 of them each time and i can't pick out the specific actor that we had but, but he was good the children in this are phenomenal good. as you would imagine i imagine they're all Sylvia Youngs and they are trained down through to the bone yeah. and it is so fluent and so natural and so just goddamn talented yeah and I think a lot of the joy comes out of seeing them express themselves in this way uh, the Andrew Lloyd Webber Foundation pushes arts and the importance of music in education and you can tell that the director and the team involved with this and Andrew himself have brought a passion to the stage in that respect that really comes through as an audience member it's a celebration of young people's passion and skill for music. Uh, what a, this is like a piece he must be really proud of to be able to show how talented young people can be and how, how talented they are. Yeah. I thought the whole piece drove really well. Um, the scene changes, move slickly, um, the band, I think there was a five or six piece band, but all the children's numbers were played live at the start of the piece. There's an announcement by Andrew Lloyd Webber kind of saying, I guess That's the no question that I get asked is, where is the music live? And he said emphatically, yes, it's yes, it absolutely is. played by those children. And when we go into the big battle at the end, the band actually come away from the instruments and are clapping and supporting the children, so you know that the sound that is coming out is just from the kids, and it's fantastic sound. In terms of the score, um, you, you recognised a few motifs of Lloyd Webber, didn't you? Is there that was fair some, to say? Yeah, now we spoke about rock, um, kind of Andrew Lloyd Webber doing rock musicals. He also did Whistle Down the Wind, which is quite rocky, and there were a quite a few um, chords in this piece that I recognised as echoes from Whistle Down the Wind, kind of like, meow, 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 that one oh, specific. Oh yeah, so if you recognise that. From Whistle Down the Wind, if you think of that, come and see this, it will resonate and you will hear that. I liked um, I liked a lot of the numbers, especially um, Stick It to the Man, which it's is a, a great song, it's yeah. a theme throughout. Um, if I, you wanna jump yeah. up, la la la, I'm I sure that one was also in the film. I'm sure, maybe. maybe, we were getting straight A's. Da, 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 da. That's great. I'm sure that's the song that they did at the end. Comment below, let me know if I'm wrong or right. But I think that song was actually taken from the film, and they did that in this as well. I, I also think. liked um, Where Did the Rock Go, which was Rosalie's character's sort of torchlight moment. Yeah, she's. you were saying kind of that you felt as if she was underdeveloped in the first act. Yes. And she did come into her own in the second act. Yes. She has a great voice. Played play by Florence Andrews. Yes. Very good. How about creatively? What did you think of the movement? I thought the movement was great. Um, seamless, slick, appropriate, um, relevant to yeah. what was going on. Modern as well. Quite, quite contemporary and, yeah. and very fitting with the rock theme. Um, great work by um, Joanne M. Hunter. As um, a choreographer. Uh, also, just um, who was the guy playing the lead? Who I, I know you Stephen warmed him Leesk. in the, Stephen Leesk. I thought he was brilliant throughout. I know you were in warm to him in the second act, but I thought he did a fantastic job throughout. Big shoes to fill in terms of black. Jack Black, Jack Black. Um, he is a character and a half, and for this it has to be amplified and bigger and longer. And I thought he drove the piece home 
like this is an epic for him as uh, whoever is playing that character this is a full-on piece it's that you have to give to climb, 200 percent like yeah. it's you, there's no easy ride whatsoever he must come away exhausted or, or totally buzzing and unable to sleep for days. Yeah. One or the other, adrenaline like, high, right? The whole piece and ends real up, rocky voice. I've got to say, his yeah, vocal on he his, has when he was no rocky. musical theatre background at all. I mean, he's a classically trained actor, but he has no musical theatre background. Like, I thought his comic timing was fantastic. Um, some, some really tricky comic moments that could be overplayed, but he nailed them just right. Um, if anything, they pushed through some of the earlier moments quite quickly. Um, and uh, some of it was a bit lost, but then it slowed well, down in its comic tempo. Child actors work in time regulations. You've all got to be out the door, <laughs> haven't you? So if we don't move quick, we won't we'll we'll finish the show. But um, in terms of his rock, the quality of his rock voice was brilliant. Yeah, I would agree. Um, I liked his singing. I didn't think that was a problem at all. Um, any, th any downsides to this production, um, apart from what we've talked about? No, I think we've already hit on them. Um, Tell you what else I did like actually. I liked the band. There's another thing in the band. Like I liked the you know the band that he belonged to, oh, who yeah. were kind of like poison-esque. And I, I really don't know who they were. Them. They must have been um, doubled up by the um, people who were playing the parents, teachers and parents and teachers and stuff. And I was trying to pick out in the bows who was it? Who were who were the people? Because they must have all long hair, wigs, wigs on. Um, and it was hard to pick them out, but they did a great job. Yeah, really great job. Uh, the whole thing ends up like a rock concert, and you've encouraged to pull your phones out and take sort of video, selfies, whatever you want. With the band playing, their the final band number. Playing behind you. Now, I, I, how do you feel about that? I thought it's great. Too many, I mean, you rarely see footage of any shows because you are not allowed to pull out your camera. I'm trying to think where that hasn't been the case. Uh, we did see up at the Birmingham Rep, um, the Bob One Marley love. musical One Love, and in that you are invited up into the audience at the end. Onto the stage. Onto the stage, and you can kind of take selfies and videos. So I've seen it done there. It works quite well. I, help, I guess it helps promote the show as well. If you tag it on Facebook, we, do you know what I mean? So it's a form of promotion that you're a bit silly not to take advantage of. Why, what are you thinking? I, I'm just thinking it's potentially done a little bit early. It's not done right at the bows. It can be slightly distracting. Um, I would say one thing I liked about this venue for this sort of show is because it feels arena-esque, the concert numbers come alive in the space. I yes. think this is an inspired choice of venue for a show like this. It suits it very well. New London, Olivier-esque, it, it does. It suits it extremely well. And as a note on the people getting their cameras out too soon, I did see the ushers come darting down and I was kind of thinking, what is going on? Why, why are they dying here and there and telling people to stop? Um, and then it made sense when they said you can get your cameras out. So obviously they'd heard about this and brought them out too early. Yes. Uh, so I think we need to give a shout out overall to Lawrence Connor, the director. Yes, director. We often forget to mention the director. If it goes wrong, it's always the director. Yeah, it's your fault. If it goes right, we forget. But I thought the director did a great job. I mean, never work with children or animals. And there's a lot of kids in the show. It must be a mammoth task for him. And, and the... You know what? Let's give the resident director a shout out as well. I think <laughs> whoever we is on resident, yeah, it's keeping everybody ticking over. Yeah. I guess because you've also got to slip children in if children are sick, then you've got to pull in, you know, the understudies yeah. to be able to step Alan in. Alan Bradshaw. I'm sure he gets no praise at all, but he's the resident and children's director. So well and done, Alan. Yeah, well done, Alan. You're doing a great job. I mean, that's a mammoth task. I don't envy you, but well done, buddy. So I guess you're probably wondering how many legs we are going to give School of Rock playing here at the New London Theatre. School of Rock. Here at the Newland Theatre, we are going to give... Four! Four legs for School of Rock. Yes. Um, I just, yeah, it was great. Do you know what? This is a great show to bring older children to. I would say eight plus, probably. Exactly what I was going to say. And, and maybe young teens. It's a shame the little leggers aren't with us, but... I think they would have a great time and I think they would come away feeling inspired. Yeah, it's, I think it's they would a, want to pick up an instrument. It's almost staged and directed for children as well. It's yeah. very simply placed and you know, you could see visually everything that's going on. I think the little leg leggers would love it. Family show, 8 plus. Yeah. This show, Lion King, Aladdin, yeah, whatever, School of Rock, bring them to this. It does have a, it does have a message and it's probably less, self, less superficial than some of those Disney ones that you have just mentioned. Anyway, that's what we think. 
Yeah, that's just what we think. What did you think? Did you agree or disagree? Let us know. We'd love to hear from you. We're the Breaker Leggers, and we'll catch you again soon. Bye! Bye.